Hey, hello, Racing the Beam. How are you doing? Yeah, here we go again. Out of schedule. Um, but it kind of we need to do more things. A lot of things. And, you know, time is ticking. Look at those seconds going down. Mm -mm. 21 days. It looks like it's plenty of time, but it's not. So, let's take a look where we are. I mean, last day was pretty good, I think. I mean, this is starting to look like a game. Like, we can collect things, get the scores, and we can get killed. And, and we can respawn. That makes it look like a game, at most. Well, if it's a game, it... You have a game over the screen, right? So that's a game already. <laughs> cool. So today I want to hopefully get the entity system going and get the entity system going. And if things go really well, we may even fully add one enemy. Um, the first thing is that, you know, this to-do list is kind of, you know, it's, it's full of lies. We, we, we're not going to do this, I think. Uh, I've been thinking about this specific game, although free and use lists is probably the most flexible uh, approach. I mean, we would have to do that if we were creating and destroying entities frequently. But we're not going to do that. I mean, looking at the, this type of game, mm, what we're going to have is basically when we start the, the because we can kill the enemies. So, well, yeah, we can get. Okay, so let let's let me start again. So we can kill the enemies. So the enemies are always going to be on the screen, which is true. Is that we're going to have pickups? So those pickups. Uh, will disappear for the entity list but what is more important here is that we're never going to add new entities after we add entities at the beginning right? for example if we were shooting or throwing something that would mean that we need to allocate a new entity after the map is being initialized and in that case going through free and use lists is important because otherwise we'll have to find a slot and you know it is what i'm going to implement today won't work with that but considering the considering this game specifically i think i'm going to go with the most simple implementation i can think of um and then Probably, I mean, I can use, uh, I can do the interface I tend to do in, in all my games. And if I change my mind, it shouldn't be too difficult to do, you know, the internals are not going to be exposed. So, you know, we could be just converting them into a free use list. But I, we're going to do it with the most simple thing. So, because, yeah, we don't have time. So let's add entities and let's start again. There's probably a way of doing this. So I don't have to repeat this all the time, but anyway. So, um,. So we're going to have the entities. The entities I'm going to have X coordinate, a Y coordinate. Uh, okay, so spoiler alert, it's going to be similar to the player. So let's take a look at the player. So they're going to be pretty much the same as the player so with differences as in 
uh, they're not going to have momentum they're not going to respawn they're not going to be vulnerability they don't want to have they're not going to be dying things like that right but everything else for example direction yeah they're going to be facing left or right right so we need to know now that they're going to be we need to track the frame of the animation so that's going to be true there's going to be a delay in the animation changing the frames right we may have gravity we can have it for now so jump is a flag for jump and momentum is when we implement the coyote time so for now i don't think we need anything else well we can have a flag uh that we can use for things uh you know generic flag and that's probably all we're going to need so so we're going to have a function to initialize the entities then we're going to have a way of allocating a new entity then we're going to have oh wait, we need to do something here uh how do we do this we need to have um we have something in on the map right Okay, I'm not displaying things, but I will I will I will get there. Okay. So entity type this below belongs with the entities. Right? And it makes sense. Oops. Um so map um and we're going to include and it makes sense because the map is going to spawn the entities, so it needs to have access to this interface. Uh, it, it has already access to the player, so it's, in its, you know, it's adding the player to the map. To the well, it's not part of the entity system, but yeah, it's kind of the same. But even if it's not exactly, it's pretty much the same. So uh, it makes sense that the entity type and we need to know. Ah, uh, sorry, it's an entity type. Can we use type or is it a reservoir? I don't remember. It's probably not reserved. We will see. Uh, I don't think it's not it's not reserved. We can use it. So entity type is a type. Right. Why? Because we need to make uh no. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We need to track things here. Uh but maybe we don't no i just changed my mind i mean it's still true it's still true but this is not the entity type that entity type is referring to the map so we can just have for example yeah because i'm thinking um free or use used so i was thinking you know in some games i include the type and that's important because for example uh we have i mean the player is not in the entity system but it could be but forget about that for now it's not we are going to assume it's not but you might have entities that are the player bullets and those have different properties that the enemy bullets and those have different properties than the enemies so why because when your bullets are moving on the screen for example they need to check uh, collision against the enemies but not the enemy bullets so you need to know what type of entity is in this case um we don't care i think we only need to know if the entity is in use or not because we're never going to have entities interacting with other entities 
is always going to be the entity against the player, and the player is off the entity system, so it should be fine. So we initialize the entities, we uh, get a new entity, then we have entities update, uh, entities draw, and we're going to need erase as well, right? So it has to be the same as the player. Yeah, so entities erase. So it's going to be the same. It's just that it's going to call to all the entities that have been allocated, right? Cool. Uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, we, If we were using a list, we will have also... If we were using lists, we will, you know, uh, a list of uh, used and free entities. I will have like entities collect, for example, because within the list is kind of expensive. So we only mark the entity as being erased and then we do garbage collection later. That's what I do in the 8 bit games. But in this case, it's not going to be necessary because in reality, just by saying used to zero, that entity is going to be so basically we erase then we update if after update use is zero we don't draw it and that entity is free to be reused so we could be adding a new entity although it's never going to happen because we know that we're not going to allocate new entities after we got the first you know the map initialized so it's not a big deal. Uh, the only thing is that we don't want to go through those. I mean, if you pick up something and that something is out of the map, um, uh, you know, you don't need really to call update again or draw anything, right? So I think this is going to be the interface. Um, simple as that. So. Okay, so let's build the code of this. So uh, we're going to store the entities here. So, so, and we're going to start, for example, with 32. Thirty-two entities. I don't know. Is that a lot? It's a lot. It is not enough. I don't know. We're going to start with that, um, and we'll see how it goes. Um, cool. So entity in it is only going to do a mem set. And it's a string. I never remember. So that's why I'm looking at the invention. Having the manual is good. Uh, okay, so what is the parameter? <laughs> okay, okay. Fine. So, zero and then size of uh, entity times max entity. Okay, thank you, manual. Um we also need to know um uh have an end an index like last we can call it last there are no entities so the last uh no it will be more like next right You can use next because it's a it's a reserve word next. No, what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so... Okay, next is the first one, because there's nothing, right? So, entity is new. So, we do... Uh, no, why am I doing this? Okay, so we agree that we are not going to search for a free slot. Uh, is that true? No, it's not true. Because... No, we need to go through the... Because uh, basically we can have effects, right? So, for example, what if, you know, when we get the keys and the doors open, we can have an effect? That could be a new entity. So, yeah, let's do it like this. It's not going to be efficient. Uh, maybe... Mm, how do we do this? Let's keep, keep last. Because we're not going to go to un or over the 32 entities if we only have 8, right? And... And then what? Do we fill the gaps? Um, do we fill the gaps? Or what do we do? Let me think, because um, when we add, I mean, I prefer having the entities to be, uh, sorry, the effects to be an independent entity. But in reality, mm, it may not be, need, may not be needed. I mean, there are different ways of doing this. I mean, we can look for a new space. This is not going to be slow, right? If entities I use is equal to zero, then and then that's it. Yeah, but we don't know what is the last one, right? Well, okay, we can do something. If i is bigger than last, then last equals to i. No? So last zero is there and there's nothing. We go to zero to nothing. So if i is bigger than last, then plus equals i plus one. Yeah, we're going to go with that. So that kind of says the high limit and we might have gaps in between, but it's fine. We're, gonna, we're not going to get other entities very far, so this is not going to be a problem. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, entities update. Uh, we're missing things here. A lot of them, actually, because we need to know. So, in it, and it's going to pass. So, we need an init function, we need an erase. And then we need a draw. So basically, uh, I'm not sure if I'm writing this currently. We'll see when I com we compile. For now, we're going to leave it like that. So entity update, what it's going to do is... Um, from I to last... And then if, if entities i 
use then update and then we pass the entity uh, which is okay so that should be it if using use then we call the update and the update is going to pass uh, this structure to whatever we set in the in the init right okay and this is going to be the same but we're going to call it erase and draw is going to be yeah you can start it's going to be the same well we need to add more things here because anyway anyway let's do one thing at a time so this is the basics of and everything is wrong so type it is throughout entity uh, is this correct why i'm doing wrong so it's complaining about oh because we can't use the type there right so Can we do this? I mean, I usually don't do this because in 8 bits, uh, I don't bother seeing the parameter. I use a global variable. Uh, so, struct entity S doesn't have date because I didn't add that. It's not, it's not in it, it's update. Okay, it compiles. So yeah, this is the basic structure. Okay, so we're missing things here. So... So we need to store the background when we... So we can erase the background. So that is going to be 16 times 16, right? Uh, what else? I mean, in reality, uh, let me think. Do we need to do, do we need an erase function? Let's think about that. Uh, do we need an, an erase? Do we need a draw? We don't, because we have all the data we need, right? So let's change that. Yeah, I could have, you know, if you plan things in advance, what is the fun on that, right? I'll be back in a minute. Sorry about that. I'm back. I was a little bit of an emergency. Anyway, so yes, we don't need those. Uh, we don't need all that because we can... I mean, looking at the player, what is the player doing? It's very straightforward, really. 
Mm, so this is what the player is doing with, with the race, right? Can we do this? Here. Yes. We can, right? Because we're going to do entities i x entities i y 16 16 and entities i b g if i can type okay so that's the same right and we do it for every entity that is that is in use right and for draw it's the same so what we're going to do is it's just the same so it's going to be entities i i'm not sure if this is going to be the most efficient way of writing this but we will revisit that later right so format that yeah it is so entities i i mean i'm kind of doing things as i go but okay mm, first thing that may be different because animation frames are going to be different right so it's going to be the same sprites that is true but the the animation frames are going to be different. How do we manage that? Without without having um, a custom draw per character, right? Per enemy. I mean, the race is pretty clear, but there's no problem because. It's just split in the background, right? Um, now the question is, how are we going to manage this? How many, how many do we have in the player? Oh, we're not going to have as many, so it may be okay. We can just have those frames as part of the um, can we do some in smart pointers here can we do rect frames can be this a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. Huh? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so fine. This is wrong. So actually, you know what? Uh so in this case, no, let's do it nice. Let's do it like this, shall we? So Well, I don't know. If I was if I was using uh SDCC I can tell you I wouldn't do it like this. Uh oh but here I think it's fine. That's it. It's a slightly bit nicer, I think. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Nobody to tell me that I'm doing it wrong, right? It's just because it looks slightly nicer. Right? How much? 
I wonder if it makes any difference. Uh, because... Yeah... I know. I'm going to do like this. Okay. Now, question is... What I'm doing here is correct or not? We're going to see now. It may not be. So... Could have used this, right? Could have done... No, I'm not doing it properly. Can I do just... I mean, there is only two left. I'm not going to do a replace now. It's Sunday. I'm working tomorrow. Look what I'm doing. Having fun, isn't it? Okay, so... Uh, this is true. Now, uh, how do we do with frames? Um, is something like this? Like this? No? Do I need three pointers? I don't think I do. Can I just do this? And see what happens? It's probably not. Okay, 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 okay. Fair enough. Um, so, of course, I need... VGA and I need data um, expect the contract for argument to stay right uh, yeah okay so we also need the map Sorry, what is complaining about? It's complaining about... Yeah. Because it has to be constant. Incompatible to argument of V3. Yeah. Uh, it's a pointer to pointer. I don't know. Can we do this in a different way? No. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. No, that's that's not. See? So, it's a pointer to pointer. But that's not really what we need. We need... That's what I thought. That it was pointer to pointer to pointer, right? And, you know, it can explode when I try to use that. So I don't know if that's correct, but... So, so basically, um, so it's two times six. So I'm doing this because what? Um, are going to have the enemies more than three frames? Probably not. So I could be, I could make this simpler by saying that it is a point to frame, a point to frames. Two directions. Per three frames max, so that is going to be six. And in that way, 
we don't need to do this anymore because we can do it like this and it has to be const uh, what? ah, it requires a pointer alright yeah, because the other one was not correct and we can make it simpler like that so in that way each entity when we initialize we set the frames accordingly and it's going to be great it's going to work <laughs> of course it's going to work so um, to include the entities then what uh the map has to do things with entities as well okay in here what it's going to be do is so um entities erase then player erase because we're going to draw the player last so player update Entities update. I'm not sure which one has to go first. The player? Maybe. Then entities draw because we want the player to be on top always. And that's it. So that this should crash because we haven't initialized the entities on the map. Let's do that. We have entities. So we do things here and then let's end in identities. So this should do nothing, right? Because there's no entities. We call in the code, they're not doing anything. That's fine. Okay, so now. See, the thing is that the first time we do this, there is a lot of moving parts. So we need to go here to entities and create our first enemy here. And we're going to call it snake. Um, then we need to go to the map. Like we added the one entity already, which is the player. So we're going to have another entity. which is the snake and I believe we don't need to do anything else that should automatically add the snake to the entity list right so now in here uh, we need see mm -mm -mm. that's what is confusing who cares about this nobody just the map so why is is that there so it shouldn't be there because nobody is going to care about that so we have a player and we have a snake now um so that means that in case of snake we will have to call snake in it right uh but also we need to do more things we need to do more things so we need to we need to get an entity right uh but not e how do we do this so we need to get an entity and uh, this can be outside And here, we need to add some braces because we're going to do something before the switch. So, if end is not player, which is awful to do it, ladies, but let's go with that. So, uh, 
okay, so we get the entity, right? We allocate the new entity. If we get a null, this is going to be a, a panic, right? So, um, are we using PGA here? Yes. So, we need to go into panic mode and and crash it should never happen though but if it happens can continue because we just run out of entities so we need to set mode uh i think it's three right then we need standard input output I don't know if we need to say anything else, um, but... This is pretty bad, and we can continue. Uh, okay, so it's a standard leaf, so let's include that. I mean, in the case of a bit games because there's usually no way you can you know in an 8-bit system nobody can hear you scream so the snake in it is not it's not available because we need to implement that but basically um in an 8-bit system the only thing i usually do is a change the border of the screen or something like that when it's in debug mode so you know it should never happen but it happens i can fix that uh once the game is being released it's never going to happen I need to be sure that it's never going to be happening because I can't report that. So potentially we could be doing something here. We could be saying this, uh, we define the debug here and we it do this only if it's able. Right, and we can make a release without that. Hmm? So we could be doing that. Um, this is a, a, a way of doing it. I'm not sure if I like this way of doing it. Um, We could be just saying if the entity is, is the player do this I think it's better like this, isn't it? Do I need a default? I don't think I need it. We don't need it. Okay, I think it's cleaner like this. Let me see. Okay, we're going to do okay. So the player is not part of the entity system. So we need the player. Otherwise, uh, we get a new entity and we call the init of the entity in question, right? And uh, we're going to pass the entity. Um, well, probably we can. Uh, I don't know. How much do we want to do here? Hmm? 
We could be doing this. Yeah, let's do it like this. Because it's going to be the same for all of them, right? So... For all the entities, it's going to be the same. So copying the code in every init should be a little bit not nice, isn't it? In it. <laughs> so yeah, we can do it like this. Okay, so that means uh, that we need to create a snake. Okay, so snake in it is going to be uh, it's going to have a snake, an entity. Sorry, it's not going to have a snake. It's going to have an entity, and then in entities, we know that the date is going to be just the same. And then we agree that for update and draw, we don't need to do anything. It's just we need to set set up the pointer to the list of frames. Um, because the the snake, the snake here, uh, it only has two frames per direction. Whilst uh, the path is going to have three frames, but it's going to be the same for both directions. And when we have more enemies, because we need a couple more, for at least, they might have a world cycle like the player. So that means that, you know, it's going to have three frames per direction. So, uh, yeah, cool. I think I'm, I'm doing it currently, but I'm not completely sure if I'm counting. Uh, I think this number is wrong. That number is wrong. The wild cycle is four, so it has to be four. Anyway, it was eight. Not that bad, right? So, in entities, it's going to be four. And some of them can be empty. We don't care, really. Uh, most of them are going to be empty because we set in the worst case and then, you know, we, we go from there. Sorry, I had to blow my nose. Uh, cool. So um, let's go back to the snake, shall we? So, no, oh, stop doing that. Okay, so um, we need to do the usual boilerplate and include. Entities, we're going to need the map as well, and we will need the player. I just do it this way, okay? And then just include the snake. Although it really doesn't matter because it's not going to use any of these functions anyway. Okay, so, um, so, uh, do we need the snake? We need to, we're going to copy this, but it's not going to be the same. It's going to be, so, Two frames of six. No, it's going to be two frames, two, two directions of four. Which is going to be this one. And this is not going to be the, the world cycle, but 
for now we can leave it like that and why I'm doing this wrong Cool, 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 cool. So, so let me see. What does the snake in it have to do? So we need to ensure that. Okay, one thing. One thing we're going to do uh, in in entities. So when we find the entity, we can return we're going to set the value so we're going to say sorry we're going to in any the entities i think it's going to be very useful if we set this to zero because now we don't need to worry about setting all that does all this stuff so x and y and d is set uh, frame, we can start with zero, delay is zero, we're not using gravity, so we don't need to worry about the flag, the background, oh, that's a good one, so, the game, we need to draw the entities before entering the loop, because if we don't draw them, the background is not going to be there to be to be erased, right? So we need to do that first. Okay, going back to this. The background, we don't care. It's going to be set up. The flag, we're not using it for anything in this one. We only need to set the frames and the update function. So the frames is going to be equals to frames. This copy of frames we have here. That is wrong. We need to change this. And, oh, I was wrong. We're going to use the function. Although I could be changing the order and it will be okay. So, update, it could to be a snake update. And a snake update, we can just don't do anything for now. Okay, so now we're going to need uh, the coordinates of the snake isn't it so it's going to be 0 32 and and 16 32 and then these two can be zero i mean it's wasting space i know but Actually, we can copy all of it. I don't know why I did it. Anyway. So, 32, and then it's going to be 32 and 48, right? And that's it. Those are the frames of the snake. Um, can we make the snake wall very quickly or shall we just try it and see that the snake draw is drawn? Uh, cause in... Uh, okay, 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 okay. So, I mean, it's convenient to write it like this, but we can do... So we can do, please, keep the pointer to the first first, right? I'm not sure if this is a good idea. Uh, what? Oh, oh, because I need to include VGA as well. It's the one refining the rec. Uh, and then I can do this. Come on. No, can I? Similar to construct the compatible type 5 or construct 4. Um, I don't know. Can I just say... Just ignore that. And say, you know, um, 
Is this going to be true? Oh, Matt doesn't know. I'm not sure if this is going to be true. It's going to be padding or something. I shouldn't be doing it like this. So... I'm going to do it like this. And don't risk... Don't risk it. Right? Uh, so this is right and this is left. I'm not completely sure what I'm doing, but I think I'm going to do it like this. Uh, okay. Uh, the map needs to know about all the entities. Uh, sorry, snake. Because he has to call to the init, to the init function. And in fact, there's something we can do. Uh, we don't need to do this. We can do con, uh, static cons. Um, what? Uh, static cons pointer to init. Uh, that it needs an entity and we can define it like this is this right? I'm not sure but in reality we can do null and then snake in it we need to do null the first one because he's the player right? oh we don't need to because we just can do a snake in it and we can do uh, we can do in it um, and minus one <laughs> not going to work is it Uh, no, okay, because I need to say that, what is this? Uh, how do I do this? I do this in all my games and I don't remember right now. So, um, how do we call this? Oh, map, is in the map, is in entities, is in entities where I do the spam. Uh, no, it is in main. I don't remember. I have a constant list of all the init functions. 100% sure. Now, where is that constant? There you go. Look at this. I'm going to copy that. So, so static. Okay, so, and this is expecting a parameter, which is NPP. It was so close, isn't it? It was so close. Uh, sorry, not that one. So close. Okay, now it's when it crashes. And nothing happens. Uh, no, it didn't crash. But it didn't draw the, the snake either. Um, what could it be? Well, we know player is going to be zero. We change this is going to break, but it's done. Let's ignore that for now. Um, do we know if the snake is being in it? So, um, um I don't know. Um, we can do this. 
It's going to complain. Ah. It's because we put one in his arrows, right? And uh, what I'm doing is standard lead, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, it's being called. So the init is being called. Um, so. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this means that, okay, so last is zero. Mm. Okay, so the snake is there. Oh, what I'm doing. And the order of drawing and painting is correct. So everything is fine. It's just that the snake is not doing anything. So, okay. So we know that the snake is going to update the frame pretty much like the player, right? So this is going to be pretty much the same. The only difference is that we are working, sorry, we are working with the entity. And uh, now we don't care about this because uh, there is no jumping. And we know it's only two frames, so we can just, we can just alternate between zero and one. Right? And walk delay uh, what was one delay here? It's going to be eight. It may be different. And if it's not, we can move it to some common place. Uh, okay, it's not, it's, it's animating. That's, that's good. Um, so what next? We need to move. And for that, uh, we're going to do something similar to what the player does, right? Which is basically, no, it's going to be different. So, so if direction is the left, and then it's when we're going to have problems here because we have a lot of stuff here that is defined in the wrong place. So, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, where do we put that? In entities. <laughs> Sounds uh, the wrong place. But let's do that. Why not? Sounds like the wrong place. We're going to regret this. That's okay. Let's do things and then we will see. Uh, so, what delay? We say we're going to put it here as well, right? Cool, uh, so if it's left, then we do if it's, uh, no, map is blob, and we're going to do ax plus 16, uh, y plus 15, so we check the fit, and no. We're doing, we're checking left, right? No, let's check right. Uh, so I was checking left first. Let's check right first. So plus 16, um, so is the next step. 
if it's blocked, we change direction. Otherwise, uh, we increase. Uh, wait a minute. We increase, right? Otherwise, which means that direction is left. If we're not blocked uh, in minus one, then, well, in minus one, then uh, right. This is wrong. Otherwise, let's do this. And of course, okay, okay, okay. Still, I mean, I was planning to do specific time. Okay, uh, that's not what we wanted, right? That is okay. That is pretty much what we want. So, um, so if it's blocked, or or it's not blocked, the floor will be going to move. And basically, we don't want to hit a wall. And we also don't want to walk over, you know, if there is no blocks. So, sorry, there is nothing blocking us. So, if there is no floor, there is no ground to step on, uh, we don't want to walk in there. And if it's blocked, well... So, with 15, we look at the feet, and with 16, we look under our feet. So, with this now... Snake shouldn't go flying. The animation is kind of okay. I haven't tried it until now. It's the first time I, I mean, I draw it. It's my first snake ever. And it seems to be okay. Which means that drawing a snake is probably not too difficult, isn't it? Um. Right, so it moves too fast, in my opinion. So we could be doing this. Um, Maybe. No, 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 no. We broke it. Okay, close enough. It was close enough. So basically, let's make it move half the speed because it looks too fast. Okay, so that looks okay. Uh, but this doesn't look okay. And now it looks awful. And then we're using magic numbers. So anyway, we are just in. It's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Okay, so five minutes for the time I was planning. Let's do something quick. Uh, we need now part with, uh, so we need to implement some function here in the player. So, so 
is so player uh Sorry, collision collision with with an entity maybe um so we're going to do something here and basically uh after moving we're going to do if player collision E then what do we do? Well we do player hit. So we're going to kill the player. Of course we kill the Batman. And then I think uh We're going to change direction. I think. <laughs> it's not, I, I don't need to say what he's doing, but okay, cool. And now this one, now this one, um, like we did the other day, I'm going to look at more or less the adjustments I had already in in nine night I think I think because oh I call it check for player nice nice I'm going to use this this one because it has adjustments already uh, on the size and stuff so so I don't need to think I'm just going to copy this. Uh, and I can explain it. And also, um, it's doing things that are cool here because it's checking some of the things that we implemented. So if he's dying or is if he's invulnerable, uh, I'm confused about this. What is this the difference? Oh, wait a minute, because this is different. So this is check for player when the the other, the entity has a fixed, has different width, right? But in this case, the width is all going to be 16, right? So I think this is what we need. So, and basically, if we are invulnerable, there's no change. If the player is dying, dying, uh, we ignore that as well. Then we have light and a stage clear. Um, both of those, I don't think we need them because we're going to implement that differently. Now, this is going to be X, Y, And this is going to be the entity. And that's it. I mean, the only thing that is a little bit not good here is that, well, you know, uh, you know, we are, we are working with 16 by 16 uh, sprites. So that's it. There's no other thing to take into account, really. Um, and obviously, all is wrong <laughs> because I just I know writing C. I don't know what is this, but it's not C. Compiler is very confused. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, because I wrote collision with one L. So let's go to the snake and fix that. So, uh, okay, so, um, I mean, I know this is not a tutorial, but I can explain it. So basically, um, we are checking two bounding boxes. So we have 
uh, the bounding box. So it's a rectangle that includes all the sprite of the player and the rectangle that includes all the sprite of the other entity, right? But because um, there is, is, you know, white space between the sprites, if we do, we assume 16 by 16, it's going to feel unfair. Well, it's not going to be good. We need to reduce the bounding boxes. So it is pretty clear that you're touching the enemy when you lose a life. And basically, uh, in the Y coordinate, we don't do anything. So we took six and six, but in the X, we are reducing basically to a, to a half. Um, so we are trimming four pixels on each, on each side. So let's look at that. Well, I need to go up to jump. So... Okay, so there is a bug in there. Interesting. Yeah, okay. So there is a bug, and I think it's related to changing direction here. Uh, why is that? It doesn't change anything if we don't change direction. Oh, oh, you know what it could be? It may be it's not the, the no, the bug is not there. Okay, so there is a bug. But it's not related to this. It's related to here. And okay, because we draw the player last, we need to erase the player last. Okay. Right. So that means that our entities bit here. It has to go from last minus one. Uh, well, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ah. Let's not break anything. So, mm. so this is okay, but we need to get, uh, um, Is that correct? Probably not. Probably not. Okay, so let me think. Uh, so basically what we need to do is we need to erase backwards, right? We need to erase backwards. backwards. So to do that, we need to get the last one we got. Um, Maybe this is worth doing it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, or we don't really care because it's never going to do anything inside the loop, right? And that's a pointer. We're happy to point to something that is not really. Uh, we don't see the difference because there is only one entity. But in reality now, we can get very close. And it's not causing any issues, see? Cool. So that's basically the snake working. Now, this is really cool. Uh, we can just have another snake here and then say deer is left, right? Because we implemented that last day. And okay, so let's just start simple. Okay. 
Okay, so that is not breaking anything. All right. And I guess this doesn't change anything if we do it here, right? to do it there so it's one two three four five six seven eight so can we handle eight snakes without delays or stuff yeah of course we can <laughs> nice Too many snakes. Cool. Well, that's basically it. We have snakes. First enemy. The entity system is kind of okay. I mean, this is not a good level, but you know, I'm just testing. This is not level design at all. And I'm not very good. I mean, I mean, I need to play a little bit with it, right? Because I need to be sure that there are no issues, but... Yeah, it's not... Doesn't let... Doesn't let me test anything. Anyway, I think this is perfect. I'm going to keep these changes. Let's do a quick review. That was quite a stream, isn't it? Cool. So that's the snakes. Yeah, we need to have more enemies. Uh, um, the next one will be the bat. And it's going to be very simple so it depends if tomorrow i have time to do some drawing and i feel inspired i might draw maybe a couple more enemies enemy types um but i think we can in next uh, next tuesday we can implement the bat and then look at the pickups because the enemies are going to be pretty much the same um and i mean looking at the snake this is the most basic enemy um so the path is going to be similar uh then you know the animation cycle is going to be different and uh, but it's just it changes a little bit how the collision work hey hello Tcap one and your party of 32 Welcome! How are you doing? 32! I don't think I have ever had that many people in the channel. Excellent. Thank you for the raid. How are you doing? So yes... Well, let me show you. We just implemented some, some snakes. And they killed you and everything. So it was very successful over and a half, I think. Anyway. Hello everybody. Yeah, we're making a I'm making a new game for for those. And yeah, I'm doing it in C mostly. Well mostly, no, completely. 
And yeah, I mean, the plan for today um, is finished. I have my entity system working and I added one enemy. Snakes, yes. Yeah, it always has to be snakes, isn't it? So let's take a look to the code and let's make a quick review and call it a day so oh in the make file i added the debug flag because of the entities okay so this is the basically entity system so top 32 entities no i mean i'm not going to do it dynamically or anything like that just going with that with an array super simple today so we need the entities, we need the entities, which is basically setting all the memory to zero. And the last entity we have is no entities. When we allocate a new entity, we go to the entities looking for one that is not used and set that memory to zero, mark it as use, and then yeah, I mean it's the best thing, right? I mean this is for a I'm using protected mode, so it's already a 386, but you know, it's all machines. I don't want to start allocating memory and it, it's not needed for this case anyway. So I check what is the last one because we use that to make the updates a little more efficient. So for updates, we just do the update, regular updates. Uh, to draw, we draw forward and we erase backwards. So the last one we draw is the first one we erase. Cool, that looks fine. And this is basically the... Oh, I decided to move some, some defines here because I put them with the player, but we're going to use them in other places. So in the game, just add the entity, draw, erase, update, and draw, which is good. In the map, uh, yeah, I did a little bit of, of tidying up because this was here and it doesn't make sense because it's private for the map. So this entity type is, on, is about information in the map. So nobody, not all the part of the code is going to use that. And yeah, basically uh, we got that list of init functions that currently only have the, the only has the snake. We init the entities. Because the player is of the entity system, if he's the player, we initialize the player and continue with the loop and going through the entities. Otherwise, we allocate an entity. If there are no entities and we are in debug, it's panic. We report that, but it should never happen after we made the release because we're going to count entities and we're going to be sure that we never go over the limit. Uh, we set up the X and Y coordinates. Uh, and the direction with the the entity is facing and we call in it so that's super clear and simple in the player yeah we just a little bit tidy up the function to do the pedal collision with an entity which is the one that the entities are going to call hello resist how are you doing and the code of the snake uh okay so this we make some decisions here that are a little bit controversial like having the the entities doing the draw but i think for this game it's going to be super simple and it's going to be all right so we pass the list of rectangles for the frames we're going to set that in the structure and the update function so this is quite simple really um i know we might not need this function but the best day of your life Excellent rest resist for me. It's been pretty good today as well. Probably not the best, but there you go. And what else? Yeah, the update function. Very simple. Basic enemy moves moves left to right. Avoids walls. Avoids going into holes and gaps. And if he hits the player, kiss the player and change direction. And that's it. Very simple. Um, it moves slower than the player, uh, which is makes sense because otherwise it's too, too difficult. 
and we add a new entity. I mean, add a new entity to the map importer, we're just adding the name of the entity, which is the snake, which means that that Python code is brilliant. Um, we added a few snakes on the stage in the entity layer and we got the sprites that we had already. So, yeah. So add entity system. And that's it, really. Let's take a look again. Yeah, I think the plan is if I have time to draw another enemy, at least. Because I think the bat is going to be super simple to add. This, I mean, I'm testing. This is not really a level design because of the way it's getting over there to get those that, those pieces of coal is going to be impossible, really. Um, yeah, the respawn works and all great. Okay, so one, one thing I didn't test, um, although the code is super simple and straightforward, I don't think it's going to fail, but... So basically, can I get killed and then touch a snake? No, because the design is awful and doesn't allow me to do that. But if I move this snake here, and we try, so it touched me, and then yeah, I can wall past the snake when I'm invulnerable. So see, cool. So that's good. Yeah, we may need to retouch some bits related to the end of stage and things like that. But because um, when the player dies, we do we set the dying flag and we do the animation um, with the character leaving the screen. Um, I don't think it's a problem when we get to the game over. So the entities can never touch the player because a player is out of bounds, so perfect. Yeah, I think it's looking good. Um, again, the jam ends in 21 days <laughs> and 6 hours, 30 minutes and the seconds keep ticking down. So yeah, it's looking good. I think there are chances that I will finish the game uh, and I don't know, it may even be fun to play. We'll see. So yeah, this is going to be all for today. Thank you, Tcap One again for the raid, uh, and you know for all. Thank you, raiders as well, and see you next time, maybe. Bye now.